Gambia Uncharted. Well, Gambia Uncharted will want to discover Gambia, the everyday Gambia, things that are normal, mundane, the little things that everyone does on a daily basis in the Gambia. We want to showcase what this country is about, the foods, the people, our art, our culture, and what embodies a Gambian. This is a lifelong mission, a mission that I've appointed myself to be a person who will unearth this, bring it to the wider audience. So follow me as I discover and rediscover what we all know and love to be the beautiful country we call the Gambia, the Smiling Coast. Welcome, welcome to another edition of Gambia Uncharted. This is Bakau and I'm currently at the heart of a place called Waslunkunda. If you're a keen follower of Gambia Uncharted, you'll know that we've visited Bakau in our previous series and we went to Kachikali, the croc pond or the crocodile pond in Kachikali. As you can see, the last time we were in Bakau, it was fun and thrilling as we visited the crocodile pond at Kachikali. But this time, it's going to be a different thing because we're looking at Bakau with a greater, greater dimension. Follow me as you'll see. Bakau has a confluence of imagery, a confluence in terms of people and its diversity. I can see Gambia, a snapshot of Gambia 70, 90 to 120 years ago. But this is what makes Bakau very peculiar. Development has come its way, but they're able to preserve part of their heritage that made Bakau a village some 120, 160 years ago. <laughs> The education started here. Yes. Of course, we need to go here. Yeah. So, any other school. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, this, this woman, she came from England. Mm -hmm. She's called Mary. She landed in Bangladesh. Yes. And then she walked. Then, when there was no. Uh, it's all, it is all forest. But then it was all mangrove. Mangrove forest. Yes. So then she entered into the mangrove forest. Mm -hmm. Walked as far as to Gambia High School. You see where that big tree is. Yes, by the cemetery. Yeah, by the cemetery. That's where she found uh, people from Bakau. They went there to search for Bang. Bangjolo. Bangjolo. Mm -hmm. So she met those people there. When she met them, she asked them, what are you doing here? They said, we are taking a bang. Yes. Yes. So this is why the, 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 the town Bangjolo was named. Bangjolo. Bangjolo. For the first time. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. And then she, she then asked, where are you, where do you come from? They told them that they are from Bakau. So this is the way they came with the letter mm -hmm. from, from, from that mangrove from yes. that uh, bang, bangulo at the big tree. Yes. They walked by foot up to Bakau. Wow, amazing. Then I said now, the lady said now, she wanted to build a school. Then there are these uh, 
palm tree. Mm -hmm. They called palm tree. The palm. The long palm, the leaf of the long palm. Mm -hmm. That was they corrugated the roof, roof, roof. roof. make a roof out. Okay. And then start uh, ruling students. So that's the first school in Bakau, and that's Bakau school. Yes, that's Bakau. People from North Bank, our ancestors came from Baribu. Yes, from North Bank. When they came, mm -hmm. they settled here first. First. So this was they called. And North also Bakau yes. welcome a lot of Senegalese fishermen families to come. Yes, yes. You know, like uh, it's just nowadays, but then previously they don't stay here. Yeah. They come um, and go. They came. Uh, they, they come only the rain, during the rainy season. Okay. During the rainy season, they come here to 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 to, to for fishing. Mm -hmm. They come here for fishing. Right? Yes. Okay. They will be here for almost after the rainy season. Then they will go back. Yeah. For now, now they come here to settle. Right? That's why you have a lot of serial families yes. here. Yes. The Sars, the Ngoms. Yes. You know, my my uh, this is my grand grand. My grandmother, she's a Sierra. Amazing. Yes, she's a Sierra, she's a Senegalese. So it means, mm. and that's why Bakao mm. is one of the most diverse society because it's a Mandinka settlement mm. predominantly, but you have Wolofs and Sierras mm. mixed with them, and the Sierras especially were here because of the fishing. It's part of the organization, you know, like the, the original settlers. Yes. Mandinka. Yes. But then from that uh, the Mandinka, there was uh, inter intermarried. But the Mandinkas that settled in Bakau, are they combo Mandinkas or from Badibu? Um, from upriver. From from Badibu, migrated to combo. Combos. Yes. Okay. The beauty of Bakau as a village is that it has kept a lot of traditional things into modern society today. Weaving is virtually extinct in the Gambia. You hardly see weavers. The last time I've seen someone weaving probably is over 24, 25 years ago. But coming to Bakau, it's just something normal. It's a way of life. And that's the beauty of coming into Bakau. Things that are of the past are still mainstream into today's life. Hardly ever you will come across a weaver, but in Bakau, here is one just doing weaving as a way of life and making a living out of it. What you see here are vibrant, vibrant colors, and they represent who we are as people. This fabric will not be seen on an ordinary everyday man 200, 300 years ago. This was specially made for royalties, people who are royal. This, to a point, was reserved to the well-to-do and the royals of old. But in our modern day where democracy is the way of life, this is now available to anyone and everyone who can dip down into their pockets and buy it. But yet still, the craft, the art, is alive and well. Welcome. Welcome to craftsmanship at work. These are the people behind those beautiful masks that we see out there. All the woodwork you're seeing out there is done here. Sculptures at work. These are the sculptures that you find on the other side, but this is the workshop. This is where they're made. And they're just made by hand tools, no machine. Hey, this gentleman right now is sculpting a rhino using hand tools, no machines. Everything here is done by hand. And once you see the finish and you see the precision that this gentleman gets out of these iron tools, it's pretty much amazing. This is a mask, 
that's not done but close to being done and amazing work amazing craftsmanship by Gambian craftsmen these are eyelashes being sculpted you can see the lips are out the nose is out the eyes now the lashes that will be the end of the mask as it relates to the sculpting then they will come to the finishing and it's the finishing that's going to show the wood grain it's the finishing that's going to show what this wood is all about and the artwork that emanates out of this wood this shows here the diversity of the Gambian craft these are animals that are extinct in the Gambia now but they form a basis of our craft that's a giraffe it's a sad state looking at this elephant because it's extinct in my part of the world it's extinct in Gambia because of hunters who were hunting it for its ivory these are peasants and farmers of old this is a hunter right here and that's his kill right here what he just got that's an animal right here it looks like an antelope same here that's a hunter and he's you know loot he's just coming out of the bush after a day hunting and this is what he got and that's his bow and arrow that's what he uses as a weapon once he's out hunting if you look at this i'm sure it represents a different type um, a different tribe in gambia based on the hairstyles and things like that amazing work amazing display of skill and talent yeah that's an ashtray somewhere to put ashes and look look at these fine grains in it the wood how the artisan people brought the grains out look at this this is the beauty of the Gambian craftsmanship These are Gambian instruments, Gambian instruments of Malian or Manding origin. This is the Kora, a mighty, a mighty, mighty instrument, an instrument of majesty. This instrument has created a lot of stars in the Gambia. And prominent among these stars are Jaliba Kuyate, the late Alajimbai, and also the Senegambian legend called Lalo Keba Drame. Amazing, amazing, amazing. And now I'm honored to meet a young gentleman who have learned this craft from his parents and forefathers. And today, here he is, creating an instrument that's going to be very melodic and harmonious. This is the beginning of a making of a kora. This is the other side of Bacau and we have moved away from communal bacau to the bacau that represents i won't say opulence but um something that shows modernity something that reflects tourism as it relates to you know hotels this is right by the sea a different part of bacau and a different different environment from where we were and now I'm heading more towards the sea and follow me I'm Gambia Uncharted, let me show you what's out there.
Yeter sabu yer koi Yeter sabu yer koi Bangu goyer kamba Isabel bangu gerga Yeter sabu yer koi that this place called Bacau has a lot to offer not only to us Gambians but our tourism portfolio. Why? Probably it's one of the last few places within urban Banjul, urban Gambia that still have that communal look of 120, 100 to 120 years ago. This place, like I said, is an artistic canvas. This place is full of stories for a tour guide to come and showcase to would-be tourists and tourists that visit the country. So Bacau, I think, is rich and is an embodiment of the people of the Gambia and from whence they came, especially those that settled in the urban area. And Gambia Uncharted endeavors to go out into communities and show how folk life was about, how people lived and how people cohabitated. Isabel Bangu Guerga, Yeter Sabu Yer.